What's up, Super Sport Enthusiasts? Welcome back to the channel. It's Josh here, of course, with what? Super Sport Enthusiasts. That's the channel, guys. Today, we're going to talk about some good stuff, okay? But before we get into the conversation, you already know we have merch. All right, first link is in the description below. Make sure you guys check that out. You already know. We are here to grow the brand. We're here to help the world, save the world, one person at a time, as much as we can. And to start that off, we start with the merch. 50% of all sales of the merchandise goes to help the Wounded Warrior Projects, all right? And guys, what that is, again, it helps with our service members, uh, whether they're in or out, but they're mostly transitioning out to have life-changing injuries, whether that be amputations from upper limbs, lower limbs, or even PTSD, something mental. It doesn't always have to be physical, but check the merch out. Let me know what you think, and if you guys have any opinions, something you'd like to see merch-wise, let me know. I can always switch it up. But today we're talking about that, yes, 2020 GT500. Yes, a Shelby GT500. And we're comparing it to no other than my Chevy gang, guys, 2019 ZL1 1LE. I hope you guys are ready. We're going to throw some stats. Let me know what you think because we got some Ford guys. We got some Chevy guys. Again, it's all about the American muscle, first of all. So let's make sure the hate's not too much up there. All about the American muscle, but we like to have a friendly competition with the Chevy and then especially with Ford. But we're going to go ahead and do this, okay? You guys have been paying attention to this Chevy versus, uh, or what is it, Ford versus Ferrari? Now it's time for that ZL1 versus that Shelby. And let's see who comes out on top. Make sure you let me know in the description below what you guys think. I'm going to shut up and let's go, baby. Peace. Alright guys, so we have here the 2020 Ford Mustang Shelby GT500, of course putting down a master 760 horsepower, and this one is going to be facing off against a 650 horsepower Chevy Camaro ZL1 1LE. So let's talk about some things here. What are some positive and negatives, okay? So for the 2019 Chevy Camaro ZL1 1LE, alright, so we got some positive, you know, huge speed. Uh, and value trusty and inspired chassis response. We know it's very good on the chassis They put a lot into this make and model um, And again, it's like very communicative on the steering. We have regular touring mode. We have sport mode We have track mode and we just have some crazy stuff The difference is from the ZL1 to the ZL1 1LE is from the mag ride to these like dampeners So it's pretty cool negative on that is like, you know, people think there's a rather rather plain design I don't agree with that super aggressive um, I love the arrow on the front canards and the rear wing. I think that makes it look super ridiculously crazy. And of course, complaint is on the rear seat. Now again, this platform does have the same um, motor as a Z06, but it has a rear seat, which helps with insurance, which helps with taking it from a coupe to uh, more of a muscle car. And, and you definitely want a back seat. If you don't want a back seat, then just get a Corvette, right? All right, on a 220... 2020 Ford Mustang Shelby GT500. Some good things are firm brake pedal. All right, remember um, they're talking about the decent powertrain, uh, king of the quarter mile. There's, I'm not too sure how I feel about that, but that's what we're going with. All right, some negative things are the tiny gas tanks. I'm hearing you get in a maximum of possibly 200 miles an hour on a tank. Um, big money, so it's very expensive, especially some dealerships are asking over sticker right now, MSRP. Um, and then people are saying, where's the steering feel? They don't feel that commutative steering that we have in the ZL11 LE. They're not feeling that sticking to the road. It doesn't feel like it's, I go left, it wants to go left. So those are some things. Let's go ahead and break it down and talk about it. All right, well, it's not really a rematch here, guys. We're just going to talk about again. We're going to pit these two against each other. It's been a while since we've seen these American Muscle Supercharged Maniacs go at it, okay? The last time the G Shelby GT500 came out or the Camaro ZL1 uh, 1LE or the ZL1 at that time was back in 2012. All right, so we know the Camaro and the Mustangs are both on new platforms, all right? The new gens for each. Um, they're both making more power. Um, and both can lap a racetrack faster than their predecessors. Of course, they're always getting bigger and better. All right, during the last 12 tests, the Mustang enjoyed, uh, you know, it had a power advantage. We know that the old Mustang, now the new Mustang, also has more power than the one LE version of the ZL1. But it is what it is, right? There's different things that make it better, and it's not always about power. 
All right, the Mustang um, is always more expensive. The ZL1 is always least. Mustang, the last two models itself for the Shelby, has definitely been more than the ZL1. So it's all what you want for your bang, you know, what bang for your buck. And uh, more sophisticated uh, Camaro that took the crown, um, I believe, on the last challenge a car and drivers put on for those. All right, so we know for 2020, this Shelby GT500 is a beast, and it shows the highest level of engineering for the Ford uh, performance side for the Mustang, right? This is the ultimate Mustang, the latest and the greatest Shelby GT500. But I just try to remember and remind people, Shelby or Chevy itself has not been sleeping, okay? The supercharged 2019 Chevy Camaro ZL11LE has been you know, quietly waiting, man. They've been waiting for a fight. They've been waiting for some competition. You know, a lot of people, manufacturer-wise, have been talking, but it's now to put it the best to the best. All right? So, again, I hope you guys are ready for the battle between the quickest and most powerful models of both the Shelby and the ZL11LE. So, let's get this rematch started real quick. We're going to talk about the matchup. Line them up next to each other. And talk about what both brings to the table. All right, so let's add up the power from the supercharged VH, right? If you want to add both cars together, you're talking over 1,400 horsepower. You want to talk about gears? Let's add both together, talking 17 Ford gears, okay? We're talking 10 on the Chevy side, 7 on the Shelby side. So that's pretty cool. All right, again, if you're talking about collaborating both prices, it's over $168,000 combined. Yes, yeah, so eight years ago, the Shelby remained the most powerful and more expensive of the two. We already know we discussed that before. Shelby's always been more horsepower. Now, I'm not going to say that means it's faster, or quicker, or better, but more horsepower because right now, for the latest generations of both, the Shelby is doing 760 horsepower when the Camaro ZL1 is only doing 650 horsepower. All right, so again, the overhead cam Shelby has 32 valve V8. Um, it does rev to 7500 rpm and it does include like i said before the 760 horsepower at 700 or 7300 rpm so that's pretty cool 7300 rpm uh you get your 625 feet pounds of torque and at 5000 rpm you know those things are moving okay and again it does have the seven speed dual clutch that's something new that everybody has been super super excited about this dual clutch transmission um, i think it was supplied by trimec uh, or Tremec, if I am pronouncing that right, and it is the only gearbox that is available right now. They don't have it in a manual. It is all automatic. What do you guys feel about that? But again, that dual clutch, seven gear, seven speed auto, sounds pretty quick. I haven't seen much videos on it, but I've seen some lately on YouTube, and they have been destroying some competition lately. So as it stands, again, the GT500 is about $19,000 more than a Camaro, okay? The base price of the ZL11 at least is usually about $73,000. Um, again, the thing that makes this GT500 expensive is this $18,500 $18, dollars carbon fiber track package, okay? So you're talking like 20-inch carbon fiber wheels, Michelin Sport Cup 2 tires, adjustable carbon fiber wing, leather trim Recaro seats, and the adjustable front strut towers or um, mounts for the aggressive camber setting. Depends. So there's a lot more options that the Ford has than the Chevy, but it's all on what you guys want. So yes, Chevy is down horsepower. How much exactly? 110 horsepower from the Ford. All right, but the price is also considerably low. Again, almost $20,000. So people like myself, car guys like myself, especially American car lovers would say, hey, if I can save $20,000, I'd get the ZL1 for $3,000, add some horsepower, and probably be at the same number as a Shelby GT500, and I will save money. But it's all on what you guys want. If you have the money, Money, go ahead and do it, all right? Again, I believe the Chevy ZL11LE revs to 6,500 RPM, redline, and 650 horsepower. Again, it, it is pretty high. It doesn't compete with the GT500 on power, but our torque is superior, okay? The, port, the torque on us are definitely superior. The horsepower, unfortunately, is not. The great thing about the Chevy ZL11LE is that it comes in automatic 10 speed and manual. Yes, when it first came out, guys, unfortunately, it only came in manual, and a lot of people were happy about that because it was a track beast. But now, 2019 model, they introduced a 10 speed. What do you guys think about that, and how exactly do you feel? So, let's talk about something here, guys. We're talking about track packs, right? We said that. 
Um, we talked about the 10-speed automatic to the manual Z01 1LE. Just to let you guys know on the 1LE package, it is a $1,500 option for the automatic um, to get that 10-speed automatic, and it does come with a torque converter, right? So again, the 10-speed was developed in partnership with Ford. It is a version of uh, the 10-speed that's from the Ford F-150, Chevy Silverado, and the Mustang GT. Um, it is an option again, like I said, it's uh, with the seven hundred and or seven thousand and five hundred dollar ZL one one LE Extreme Track Package. All right, that's what they're saying here. But I honestly seen most of the differences being about five thousand dollars from the ZL one to the ZL one one LE. But with the one LE guys, you do get the nineteen inch forge wheels, the Goodyear. All right, the Good Eagle, um, Goodyear Eagle F one Supercar three R tires. Uh, Multimatic spool valve dampeners. It does replace the mag ride units from like the ZL1, and those are mounted straight to the body. So, any of my 1LE riders can tell you out there that that car is so much more stiffer. But if you're looking for something daily, get the ZL1. If you know you're just going to be tracking it all the time and not for that purpose only, go ahead and get the 1LE. That is the biggest difference. That's what I tell people all the time. It's up to what you want. Um, in 18, 17, sure, it was just manual, but now 19s, you do have automatic, so it's not a big deal. If I did have that automatic option when I got my car in 18, I probably would have done it myself. And you, of course, you guys, you're going to get the huge carbon fiber rear spoiler. Um, and again, the one at least is going to be looking like at a base price about $72,000. Some some people find them bigger, some people find them cheaper. It's all up to what you guys think, what you want. Just let me know. Now, when it comes to noise, unfortunately, huh, I'm saying this because I'm a hater, but the Camaro's quieter. Yeah, the Shelby is definitely louder than the Camaro, so hoorah, you guys win on that. But guess what? The Mustang is also heavier. It weighs in about 4,059 pounds. All right, so the Mustang nearly weighs 200 more pounds than the Chevy ZL11 LE. Okay, so again, with nearly 200 pounds more, um, and of course, the Camaro having less mass but less power, that sort of kind of equals them out. The Mustang is heavier, more power. The Chevy is lighter, less power. Um, I, it sort of kind of evens out for a 50-50, I believe, on a race. That's all I'm going to say. All right, the 1LE does have... Um, it is a little quicker than the Mustang, despite the less power at the test track. Um, I believe what Cars and Drivers stated is the um, it beats a GT500 to 0 to 60 by 0.2 seconds. Um, so that puts it at a 3.4 second versus its GT at 3.6. However, the four rear tires eventually hooks up. And when it does at higher speed, it is going to chase down that ZL1 1LE like there's nothing. Okay, to put it into pre, um, put it into I don't know where I was going with that one. But anyway, to put it in the conversation here, we're talking about the Camaro and the, and the Shelby to 100 miles an hour coming in, all right? So the 100 miles an hour for the Chevy is 0.3 seconds slower than the GT500. And then by the time they said they took it up to 150 miles an hour, it was more than four seconds slower. That is a lot. So the GT500 gaps the Chevy when it comes to that. But what I say on that is, you know, like I said, more horsepower on the top end, it opens up. Of course, 0 to 60, the Chevy's going to win because it's less power, better plan. It's stiffer, trans uh, stiffer suspension, personally, to me. So it's going to put the power down better. But in the upper ends, that's just what happens. Same thing if you take a McLaren and a supercharged ZL1 with a 1,000 horsepower. The McLaren's going to beat them off the line, whatever McLaren it is at the time. But the the 1,000 or 1,500 horsepower ZL1 or something is going to catch them in the long run because it's all about power to weight ratio. The more power you have, it's just going to help you go further. It is what it is, but I still love my Chevy gang. And when we're talking quarter mile time here, guys, don't forget the Mustang comes in at 11.4 seconds, running at 132 miles per hour, all right? And the Camaro comes in at 11.5 uh, coming in at 124 miles per hour. What do you guys think about that? Like I said, it's not too bad. 11.4 to 11.5. Think about the pricing. Think about the, the 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 speed, the power. Is that what you get? All right. These muscle cars come in. They're not talking 100 miles an hour or 150. People talk quarter mile time. 11.4 for the Mustang. 11.5. Again, my car is stock and I've been 11.3. So just, just understand where it goes there, understand the big difference, and if these cars are so similar, do you think 
price matters? Do you think, damn, the, the Shelby being almost $20,000 more expensive? Is this something I want? Again, this is things I just want to show off to possibly if there's anyone on this channel looking into getting a car and wanting to know the difference. Hopefully some of this information helps you guys out. And then when it comes to gearing, the ZL1 is uh, equipped with the 2.85 to 1 final drive ratio or drive ratio. And the Camaro does average 14 miles per gallon. That is what it is. It's not that bad. But the Mustang has a 3.73 gear ratio. And it does average 16 miles per gallon. So the Mustang is better on the fuel economy. But the, like I said, the biggest thing is that that thing sucks dry and only gives you about 200 miles on the highway. When I think I almost got 400 out of mines on the highway, good tune. Everything just ready to go. So those are some differences, again, if that matters. But when you get these cars, you really don't care about miles per gallon. Alright guys, I'm going to leave it at that. I could sit here and talk about these two cars all night. Again, let me be the first to say, great cars. Great, amazing cars. You know why? Because they were built in America, alright? They were built in America. Maybe not all parted from America, but they're American muscle, and that's what I love. I just want to stir the conversation with two great brands, two great cars. The best thing is, not only these cars going at each other, but we're showing exotic cars that we are here to stay, we're here to fight, and that is it. We're talking about a 7-speed dual-clutch American muscle car putting out 760 uh, horsepower. And then we're talking about a wide, nice, sexy, track, Nurburgring killer of a Camaro ZL11 LE putting out 650 horsepower. Those are some great numbers. All right. Again, the good thing about Ford pushing, pushing with these amazing numbers is that Chevy's going to want to impress the crowd and come with something new we know in 2022 or 23 the platform of the camaro is not yet developed after so what's the seventh gen going to look like is there a seventh gen i'm excited for things like this so let's keep the car enthusiasts going let's keep it moving guys please if you enjoy this video like and subscribe please 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 let's grow the family we've been growing at a great rate until next time guys it's your boy josh here i love you i respect you and i damn sure salute you and hey Cop that merch, cop that merch, baby. Peace.